Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons, and I'm going to do, might just be one video, might be two or three videos, but I want to do at least one video that shows you how to review and analyze filed survey maps when you're doing a boundary survey. And so sometimes this work is done by the project surveyor or the boundary surveyor that's working on the project, but it's also a good way to start training your assistant surveyors or your survey techs or your LSITs who've learned how to do boundary research, how to kind of take it one step farther and start to look a little more critically at some of the maps. And when I say critically, I don't mean in, in a nitpicking way, but critically as in really analyzing the information that's there to determine uh, what it's useful for and what, what you need to do with it or how it might cause problems. So I've got a survey I'm working on uh, in Menlo Park, which is over in the in the San Francisco Bay Area, south side of the bay. And um, I thought it'd be helpful to take a couple, uh, take a few minutes and look at a couple of the maps. Uh, I need to do a boundary survey there. And I've actually, I cheated because I already looked at these maps, but that's all right. Um, we're going to pretend for the purposes of this video that I haven't done that yet. And uh, we're going to just walk through a couple of these maps together. So I will tell you that the uh, the parcel that I need to survey is is in an old subdivision, and uh, we're not going to look at that actual subdivision map uh, because it doesn't show much. <laughs> show, so it doesn't show any monument set. It just shows the street widths and the and the record block and lot widths. But there are a couple other maps I want to look at, at least two, and uh, one of them is is what I would say is an example of a of a very good map. All right. It's a very good map. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you wouldn't call it excellent, but it's very good. I wish I wish I saw more maps like this one. We're going to look. It's the first one we're going to look at, and uh, then we're going to look at an example of a map that's not very good, in my opinion. And uh, and I'll I'll explain why that is. Um, I just think it could have been more clear, and it's not clear from the map that the surveyor did a good job. So now that's not. The, the sole purpose of this exercise that we're going through in the video today isn't just to determine if the surveyor did a good job or a bad job. Um, that's important because uh, if he did a bad job, we have to be careful about holding elements of his survey in our own boundary resolution. Uh, but it's more than that. We want to look at um, which controlling corners the surveyor held, uh, how he's treated differences in the record versus the measured, and we want to look at any special notes he put on his map regarding his boundary resolution. Think about alternative, um, alternative uh, solutions for positions of points and lines. Uh, based on what he's put on the map, we want to think about eva how he evaluated evidence. And we also want to think about uh, what information on his map may need to, to be investigated or confirmed as part of our own field surveys, boundary field surveys. So that was a pretty good list. I should have wrote that down. Huh? <laughs> I need to, we'll get that written down at some point, and I'll get it online for others. So let's go ahead and look at this first map. So we're going to look at this map. It's a record of survey 3868. And this is done by Wilson Land Surveys in 2013. Like I said, I, it's a good survey. I actually know Ken Wilson. Uh, he's a good surveyor. He's a good man and a good surveyor. So I'm not surprised that he did a good job on this map. Uh, now, it's not perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll point out a, a couple of places where I wish Ken would have given us a little more information. But he's done a good job on the map. And um, my maps aren't perfect either. So we're, we're not being overly critical of Ken by any means. So I'm surveying a couple lots on this triangular block here. And... Uh, so we're in Menlo Park. And so a couple, a couple of questions I ask myself right off the bat when I look at a map. So the first is, what's the purpose of the survey? And then the, the second question I ask is, uh, what corners, if any, did the surveyor hold in his boundary resolution? So what are the controlling corners? So let's just start with those first two questions. And uh, just to make it easier... We'll go ahead. I'm going to type those questions up here just in notepad for us. We'll float this over in the corner. 
Okay, so the first thing we want to know is uh, what is the purpose of the survey? The second thing I look at is, uh, the second question I guess should be, uh, where is, where are the subject parcels or parcels? And then the third question is, what are the controlling monuments? Where are the monuments held in the boundary resolution? Okay, so those are the questions we want to try and answer. So let's just save this so we have it. So I'm going to just slide this to the side. On my other monitor, we'll add some more questions probably as we go through here. All right, so the very first thing I want to know is what's the purpose of the survey? Well, it looks like we got a boundary retracement. So there's not a specific statement of purpose on here. I like to do that on my surveys. Uh, but we can tell that uh, we're retracing a, uh, three lots in this block. Lot 1 to 3, block 1. Uh, where are the subject parcels or parcel? That's the second question. So we can tell from the heavy line here, looks like Ken's surveying this parcel here, lot one, two, and three, on the north east corner of the block. Where are the controlling monuments, or what monuments did Ken hold in his boundary resolution? Now this is a little trickier, it's gonna take a little more time. First thing we wanna do is come down here and look at the legend. So we can see he's, he's set some rebars and caps here. Now, we're not going to look at set, mo uh, set monuments for this question. What we want to know is what did he find and hold? So we're looking, according to the legend, we're looking for these solid circles. Now, we're hoping, because we have a, a triangular block, that we've got at least three monuments held. And Because if we don't, then that means we held some record data, and we got to figure out what we did. Did we hold a record angle or a record distance? Now, I can tell you, because I've looked at this map, that Ken did indeed hold three monuments to fix the location of this block. So that's that's a good thing. So let's start down here. So we found a brass cap in a monument box. Uh, it's unreadable. There's no record. What that means is Ken doesn't have a map or, an, or another land record that shows how it was set, but he accepted it as the center line intersection. So we basically uh, have a monument here, not a record that Ken held as center line. Uh, so that's actually going to control the center line of Sherman Avenue and Santa Cruz Avenue on the south east, southeast end. Sorry, this was the northwest part of the block, southeast end here. And I'm okay with that. Uh, I suspect this is a city monument, and you find this a lot in the Bay Area. You'll find, uh, in some other parts of, the, of Central California too, you'll find these brass caps in a monument well set by a city or a county with no record. Uh, it's fairly, actually, it's it's fairly typical. So he's accepted this monument. Uh, I wish Ken would have indicated whether or not he believed that was set by the city. He didn't, but that's okay. We can make some assumptions there about what he did. And so he's held this monument. Okay. So what I like to do for the next guy looking at the map, let's come over here to our tools. Well, we're going to open up our comment toolbar, and we're just going to throw some comments on here. So we're going to add a little call out here. And we're going to say uh, held likely city center line monument at this location. Okay, and what I want to do now is uh, I hate that red. It's hard on the eyes, so I'm going to change that to blue, and I'm going to pick a font that I like a little better here. And make that text a little bigger. All right. Okay, so we know we held this monument now. That was the easy one. 
let's go to the next easiest one. So we can see here on Avi Avenue at the center line, he found a bolt per R3. That's another one of our important maps. Um, and he held that. Okay, so we've got a record reference, which we'll want to look at that R3, but we can see he found that bolt. So we are going to go ahead and just call that out. Held found monument. Be nice if uh, Adobe Reader would just hold that font choice for us, wouldn't it? And I wanted to make that a little bit bigger too. So it's a little easier to read. All right. Okay, this third monument is the trickiest. So we can see we're hoping for a monument up here on the north that'll bound our block. And we don't have anything he found on center line, but he does show a found monument here. Now, how do we know if he held this six by six concrete monument? But you got to do a little little bit of detective work here. If you look up, you can see his measured distance here of 2950 matches the record R2 2950. So what he did was he found this monument. It's probably set. Uh, looks like it's set, uh, let's see, three and a half feet into the right of way. So probably set on the, on the. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that guy's set. Anyways, he found this monument here just inside the right of way. And he held that record distance here to come up with this position right here, this point, and the location of this line. So I'm okay with that. And it has a reference, R2, same thing as this map. No, it's different. It's actually R3. So we used uh, monuments from two different maps to hold this center line. So we might need to look a little closer at that. So I'm going to add two callouts for this one. So on this one, we're going to say uh, held found monument. Okay, then I'm going to add a separate callout. Here, because we're going to say uh, established. Let me change my font, my color, real quick, and size. So he um, established. Uh, this position for record and the found monument to the southeast. Okay. Now, a couple other important things on this map. <sighs> Let me pause there before we talk about that. So, We've got the controlling monuments. Let's add a few more questions here. Um, are there any vacant notes about the boundary resolution? How did the retracing surveyor evaluate evidence? Did the map reveal any conflicts or discrepancies between measured and record data or between data on different land records? Okay, so let's start with this one on the note. There are any notes we need to pay attention to here now because ken's a good surveyor he added a note here this is a nice note that ken put on and it probably saved me be honest probably saved me a couple hours of looking at this map to figure out what was going on so let's go take a look at it 
So he says the grant deed for the surveyed parcel and the adjacent parcel both call out this map of university edition. In book two, map 70, okay, it's the same map that our deed's calling out. However, the record is surveyed by Edwin Smith. This uh, book one, page 107, shows dimensions that differ from the original subdivision map by measuring lines of possession within block. It appears that Mr. Smith had evidence to establish the interior lot lines of blocks one and two. However, the streets were established using monuments that did not agree with the interior lot lines as described above. So Mr. Smith placed all the ex excess or deficiency of the blocks in the in lots of each block so that most of the interior lots received their full record distances while the in lots either received an excess or a deficiency. We agree with this method because if dimensions were strictly prorated from the original subdivision map, resulting positions of lot corners would disagree with long established fence lines. All right, so great note. Thank you, Ken. You're a gentleman and a scholar. So let's talk about what that means. There's a guy that came in after the original subdivision map, but before this survey, and he did a record survey. And what he did was he established the streets first, which is what you're supposed to do. He had some excess or shortage in the block. And so we put the excess or shortage in these odd lots at the corners of the block. Um, I think that's it's not the only way to do it, but it is certainly an acceptable way. Um, it's it's accepted in common law, and I, I don't have a bunch of heartburn with that. I'd want to know how much excess or shortage each of those lots got. I'd be nervous if it was a really big amount. Um, but I've already looked at the other map, and it's fairly minor, so I think it's valid. Now, that was important for Ken because he's actually re retracing lot 1, 2, and 3. And uh, lot 1 and 2 are those odd lots that got some of the... In this case, a little bit of shortage. So great note, Ken. Thank you. All right. So that's the only note on the map. The next thing we want to know is um, how did the retracing surveyor evaluate evidence? So I wish I would have got a little more on the map about that. Um, I didn't. Um, and most surveyors don't, don't put that down. Um, we don't really know why he held the concrete monument, the bolt, or the brass cap, um, we're not sure. He says he surveyed some occupation, but we're not sure. He doesn't show us what he surveyed. There's no note. I assume it's fences, but I don't know. Did he survey curbs around here? How did the curbs fit? Do the, do the fences hit on these interior lot lines? So he doesn't leave us a lot on physical occupation. Uh, he doesn't talk about any original monuments that were set on the controlling subdivision map. And he probably wasn't going to find anything anyways, but it would have been nice to have had a note that explained that. Um, so I wish I would have had a little more just about Ken's thought process here as he went through the map and evaluated the evidence. Uh, but uh, we don't have that. Now, we can infer some of that, just like we inferred here that this is probably a city mon or county mon that Ken held, even though it was not stamped and not a record. Similarly, we can come over here and, and just, you know, one of the things I'm curious about is, well, how does this map, how does this bolt fit? You know, how does it fit with this monument, concrete monument he held up here? Well, we can probably figure that out here. If we come in, we can see he's got record 354.18, measured per R2 is 354.04, so good fit. It's a good fit between those two monuments, about a tenth, a little over a tenth. Same thing here, we can see just about a tenth between these two maps. So he's got a good tight fit between these two monuments. I don't think you could ask for better. And we can come down here and look at how's the fit between this calculated position here based on these two mons and this city mon. So that's right here. We got 593.28 versus 592. So this doesn't fit as good. We got a little over a foot, 1.3 feet almost. Okay, So the block's 1.3 feet long. And then we'll find the same thing down here. He's got 509.21 versus 508.63. So we got about six tenths. The block's about six tenths long here. That tells me this monument could fit a little better, but it's what he had. And he's probably trying to hold the monument if he can, which is what I try and do. Okay, so the next question is, did the map reveal any conflicts or discrepancies between measure record? Well, we just saw one, so we have... Uh, a discrepancy between the record position of this intersection here, these center lines and the measured, we saw that uh, we actually have a long block. So we got about 1.3 feet along this line and 6 tenths along this line. 
And there's also a, another interesting conflict here. If you take some time and look at this map, I was curious um, what did Ken find? Try not to say um too much. What did Ken find at this intersection here? And so if you zoom in at this detail, he's got a detail here. You can see he didn't find any monuments here, but he did find a couple here, and he shows them both as off. So this one's off 1.34 feet, and this one's off, uh, this is off almost a foot, 9 tenths. And so what I think is going on here is that uh, these monuments were primarily set on the document for the subdivisions to the west here, and Ken didn't hold them because there's a conflict. So these two monuments don't fit with these other three controlling monuments on our map by about a foot, and that's a problem. Now, it would be interesting to see, and, and we may need to look at, if, for example, we held this, you know, this is San Mateo County brass tag right here, so that's an official county monument for what it's worth. Um, so, you know, if we bent our center line down to hit this monument, if that was the intent, uh, I'm curious how that would change our block. And uh, we don't know if this monument is, was set at a one-foot offset or if it was intended to be at the center line. We can actually look at that. I don't know if we got this map, this R3. Let's just go check that out. Sometimes you got to do that. When you're looking at these maps, you got to pull a reference and, uh, and, and take a look at another map. And uh, I, I'm, I am loath to admit uh, that I don't think I have that map, so I need to download it. And uh, I need to download it so I can take a look at it. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, that, that this monument is, uh, is off that 1.34 feet. All right, so he did find some conflicts. He didn't hold these two monuments. Okay. So that's a pretty good analysis of this initial map. Uh, you know, one final question we want to ask is, uh, what evidence on the map needs to be investigated and located during our field surveys? Well, let's think about that for a minute. We definitely want to tie in these three controlling monuments, right? And if for some reason we can't find one of those, we want to tie enough on these other maps to reestablish those positions. And Ken set four monuments here. So we've got these. These this monument was set online. These two are witness corners, and this one's inside the inside the property witness corner. So we at least want to look for these three. They're out here in the street we can get to and uh doesn't look like anything else was set on the rest of this map uh, but it would be interesting to poke around a little bit and uh definitely want to check these two intersections here and see if there were centerline monuments set since ken did a survey in 2013 and same thing here i'd want to check this intersection we know there's this monument here but i'm curious if there would be anything in these two positions or this one so we'd want to look at that okay so that's a good job looking at that map now, this video is already way long. I like to keep these to two minutes. Uh, but I don't think this other map is going to... Uh, I don't think this other map's going to take as long. So let's go ahead and look at this other map. This map I'm, I don't love. I don't like this map as much. So let's go through our... Uh, let's go through our questions. So what's the purpose of the survey? Uh, there's no statement on the map, but it is a parcel map, and we can see we're creating two lots here. So we're going to make the presumption that the, the purpose of the survey was to create the subdivision. What are the subject parcels? Pretty simple. It only shows two, lot one and two. What are the controlling monuments? It's a little hard to tell, but it looks like he held these two monuments for this south line of Santa Cruz Avenue. And he held these two monuments for what would be the east line of Sharon Road. Um, he shows these two monuments out three feet. I'm assuming those are witness corners because he shows them as an even three feet. But we would need to check that reference map reference because he doesn't tell us on he doesn't tell us on his map. And then these two monuments here, it looks like he's calling out. So he's calling them out a half a foot. I'm assuming those are not. Uh, those are not witness corners, witness monuments. Uh, let's see. Are there any significant notes about the boundary, boundary resolution? Nope. He leaves us guessing about a lot. He doesn't tell us 
uh, why he rejected these monuments. He doesn't tell us if these are witness corners. He doesn't tell us if he broke down the rest of the block. Um, how did he evaluate evidence? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> I know what he found. Um, he does tell us that he found certain monuments per the map, so that's good at least. But I don't know if he shot curbs or any fences here. I don't know if he confirmed occupation. He doesn't show us how these monuments on the sidelines relate to the center lines if he established those, which he probably didn't. Um, this is a this is not a good map, uh, and you can see I blacked out the name because I don't need to. I don't need any more enemies than I already have in the survey profession. But not a good product, in my opinion. Um, did the map reveal any conflicts or discrepancies between measure or record? Well, it's a little hard to tell because he didn't give us a whole lot, but. We talked about how he's calling these monuments out. I also noticed here we've got a difference of 83.01 to 80 measured record. That's pretty big, three feet. We got a difference here of 130 feet versus 146. That's 16 feet. That's huge. Um, man, he doesn't explain that at all, uh, so it makes me a little bit nervous. He's showing 60 feet here and here, but I have no idea how that compares to the record because he doesn't tell us. Um, so yeah, there's some, there's some problems with the map, especially the 16 feet, like what is going on there? I'm not sure. Um, and I'm not quite sure how we could have 16 feet here, but only, only a foot difference here. Um, he doesn't even tell us what the difference would be here. He also doesn't tell me how does measured versus record, uh, compare between these two controlling mods and these two controlling mods. He just gives us the one distance and I don't know, is this record or measure? He doesn't tell me. I'm assuming it's measured, but I don't know. Uh, what evidence on the map needs to be investigated and located during our boundary field surveys? This is such a bad map that I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to tie anything out. Um, I may tie these, look for these two mons and maybe these witness mons so uh, I can compare uh, how this center line of Sharon Road's matching up. This is our block right here. So I'll, I'll probably, I probably need to look for those. But So, anyways, that went quick because it's a bad map. It's not worth very much. Um, don't do this kind of work. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys that. All right, so we're almost 30 minutes. It's a good place to, to stop. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully that's helpful. I need to get those seven questions online. And, and uh, you know, it would be nice. I need, to, I need to put together a little article for this and get it, get it on my website. Um, so I'll think about doing that when I have some spare time. Ha-ha. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it, and I hope you catch us on the next video.